Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We're in the old shop today. We got the fire going, nice and warm out here. And we're at the old shepherd gap bed lathe right here. This is a neat old lathe. The, the neatest part about it, other than it's, it's, it's like really long, this thing's pre-1920. It is old. It was originally flat belt drive and senior bought it way back in the day and adapted in this electric motor with these pulleys to drive it instead. Anyway, it's a really neat old lathe and I just got done throwing the sunshade up in the window because the afternoon sun is really beating in there and it's uh, it was kind of making the GoPro a little bit angry. But fresh off of a behind the scenes episode of doing the whole setup to this thing we uh, took the cross slide off of the carriage and i mounted some plates and some tracks and everything on there ended up centering the bar evening it up with the bed and we have two u-joints in here with the drive shaft centered up on the stub that's in the four jaw chuck it looks a little bit funny here to here because this little shaft is not a super tight fit in these yokes and it's just uh, held in by keyways and allen screws so that looks a little bit funny but we're nice and true here and we're nice and true the rest of the way down there so we're ready to load a bit and try it out first i'll just show you how it works so first things first plenty of oil on the bar we don't want that dragging in those bronze bushings at all it's such a close fit anyhow and we're not going to worry about any kind of support down here for now we're just going to throw a cutter bit in and try it but yeah, it's so well supported between these sleeves that I made. I mean, this one here is like that wide, full bushings all the way. This one's so close to the cut that we can just float that block up and down the whole length of that bar. And it is just smooth as can be. So, yeah, we're not going to do anything else. We're going to try it just like it is. Okay. Cutter bit is loaded. Try and give you guys a little bit better view in here. I know it's pretty dark down in this crankcase, but to start with, we're just going to take just a shallow, shallow cut. You don't want to take any more material out than you have to. So I'm just manually advancing that with the feed until the bit gets really close to that opening right there. Just rolling it around, having a good look. Okay, we can nudge it in just a little more. All right, right there is where we're gonna start. So we're gonna have a bit of an interrupted cut because when you get up to the top here, you can't see it behind that plate, but we have those two oil holes that feed that main bearing bar plus that dowel hole. So there's gonna be a triple like skip after it gets a little ways in there, but we'll see how my bit holds up. I'm not sure how that's gonna do. I ground that myself, so start it up. And I'm just going to engage the auto feed and just let it pull itself on in. It feeds really slow, so it might take a minute to get to where it's... Oh, there we are. It's cutting. I can hear it. Okay, we're hitting that interrupt at the top. That skip is what I'm nervous about, but we're still pulling material with each, with each pass, so... Then get you in where you can see it. You can see the cut as it's going across. I know this LED light isn't the best, isn't the greatest, but we're just about through. There's only about an eighth of an inch left. We'll hear it when it stops cutting. All right, cancel the feed. Back it back out. Shut down and have a look. All right, assessing it with the mirror. Let me see if I can work the glare so you guys can see something on this camera. So we can see the three holes at the top. There's the first oil hole. That middle one is the dowel hole. There's the third. It handled those just fine. No skips, no high spots, low spots. I'm really liking all that. Um, it did get a little bit light around towards the bottom on the very inner edge way in there just like as we made like the last three revolutions it does bell out a little bit back there from bearing wear you're not gonna be able to pick it up from where you're at i can see it because i'm a little bit behind where the camera is but um there is kind of a sawtoothed finish i don't know if you can hear that or not that kind of kind of zips across so 
what I'd have to do, well, there's a couple options here. I can leave the bit right where it's at and just run it in and out a couple more times and hope that it tracks a little bit differently, which I don't think it will because of the auto feed. It's likely to hit in the same lands, but I can run the bit in and out a couple more times and that should smooth it a little bit, but I think what I really need to do is take the bit out and put more of a rounded radius on that um, on that point. If we round that more, we're not going to have such a sharp point and we'll actually be removing more of a rounded cut of material, a little bit wider cut of material actually with every revolution and that actually flattens that out. And I think I'm going to do that because when you're talking about press fits with bearings, you want the smoothest surface possible if you get just a bunch of high spots and low spots you can effectively reduce your gripping area by about 50 percent because so much of it's not in, even going to be in contact with the bearing so i think what i should just do is pull that bit out and just stone that radius a little bit more and we need to get it so it's working like it should So I've got the bit and I'm going to put a better radius on the leading edge, see if we can't even out that cut. And this is another good indicator as to why I'm using that play on words TRY try build, even though I'm doing three of them. The running joke kind of thing. I can I can always tell the, the people that are bailing on the channel that haven't really followed it from the beginning because they're like, that's not how you spell that. And I'm like, I could see how people could see that that was illiterate. That's fair. All right. <laughs> All right. So anyhow, yeah, if it doesn't work out the first time, well, try and figure out why and then just change something and then see if you can make it work better a second time or third time fourth time however many it takes to get it done we're doing most of these things for the first time on these blocks and on these little engines and stuff so it stands to reason there's going to be a little bit of you know trial and error and we just uh, fine tune until we get it right Okay, radius the bit just a little bit more and I've positioned it so we should take another skim cut because I want to get the rest of that uh, low spot way at the uh, the front edge out here. I called it the back last time but it's, it's the front edge out here. I want to get the rest of that trued out and I want to see if that's going to even up that um, the cut in that bore at all. Sounding good. We're hitting that skip again where those three oil holes are. Okay, we're past the skip. So we just finish on out here and we listen to it as it ends. We see if we get that scrape and then miss and then scrape or if it's steady all the way to the end. I think we've got better looking chips this time too. Okay, about an eighth inch left. Good. That hit consistently all the way around towards the end. Alright, another pass in progress and I didn't advance the bit at all. We're just, we left it right where we were at the last time and we're just making just a few more chips just to see if we can further smooth that finish and it was already much, much improved after radiusing that bit. So this is where I have to watch it because I can't hear when it stops cutting. So we're just about through. We're just making some fine dust is pretty much all we're doing. Just smoothing it out that much more. Almost there, almost there. We're there.
yeah, that's a much, much better finish than we had the first time. Well, I like how the bearing bar looks in the block now. We trued it out and it should all be on center. It has an excellent finish. So I'm going to disconnect from the bar, get the block back to the other shop, and we're done on the lathe out here. Now that we can get our first good look at the results, like an excellent finish on there, that trued out nicely. The adapters worked very well. I lost track of how many hours I put into making those and we have probably a total of four minutes actually turning the bar inside of them, but that's how you reinvest in yourself. We are more capable today than we were yesterday because of that. So in the end, it's, it's worth the price. And we've trued the block out, so yeah, we solved the spun bearing problem up to this point. The only issue we have now, as we look at this uh, Pac-Man logo NOS goodness, this is the standard size OD factory bearing. Yeah, we're not a press fit anymore. I just quickly measured that, and these are originally a 2.250 bore. We're about 2.270, so we ended up taking 20 thousandths out altogether. So... There's our new bearing. We just need to dig it out, right? Sometimes sound like a broken record, but, oh, and another thing too, we can no longer pin it with a dowel either because that dowel hole is walled right out as well. So that's gonna be another redesign workaround we're gonna have to try here coming up. So, all right, that's gonna do it for this episode. A bit tedious getting to this point, but like I said, now that we're equipped for it, the next one we have to do, and the one after that, and the one after that, because I have at least that many in line, are just gonna be bam, bam, bam. We can just knock them right out and keep rolling on. So thanks for watching everybody. We're gonna start turning out a new custom sized bearing next episode. Hope to see y'all back for that.